Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including a new 0% APR deal from Tesla, Tesla spotted testing for the RoboTaxi, GM partnering with Tesla and more. So let's get into it, and a special thanks to Recurrent for sponsoring this video. First up today, most people know Tesla to be a heavy competitor and vertical integrator. A huge advantage for Tesla owners thus far, and as such, a big reason for customers to buy a Tesla over any other EV in certain markets, has been their supercharger network. This network is extremely reliable and truly takes the stress out of traveling beyond the range of an EV's battery. With that said, Tesla has been clear for a while that they don't want this network to be a walled garden. That's why Tesla has begun opening up their supercharger network to other automakers. On their supercharging other EVs page, they say, quote, many supercharging stalls will be accessible to other electric vehicle drivers in North America through the Tesla app and adapters provided by your vehicle manufacturer. As soon as Q4 2024, new vehicles outside of Tesla will also start coming equipped with NACS charge ports. Vehicles that are NACS equipped do not require an adapter. It's also been our ambition to open the supercharger network to all EVs, and by doing so, encourage more drivers to rapidly transition to an emission-free future. As of right now, Ford and Rivian vehicles have access to superchargers along with Teslas. On their NACS page, they specifically detail that this support is also coming soon for General Motors, Volvo, Polestar, and Mercedes-Benz. Eventually, this should include all automakers, but the rollout takes some time to get right and not inhibit current charging conveniences in the meantime. There has been a lot of concern about Tesla's supercharger network growth after Elon fired the whole supercharger team a few months ago, but since then they have been pretty clear that they still plan to create many new stations and ensure perfect uptime and reliability for the stations that are already built. In any case, this week we've heard some very interesting news with GM. GM and Tesla don't seem like companies that would directly partner, but they are doing so specifically to build 1,000 charging points in Mexico. According to Drive Tesla Canada, quote, General Motors Mexico is committed to accelerating the adoption of electric vehicles among Mexican consumers. With Tesla's support, the company is preparing an ecosystem with charging infrastructure across the country. This collaboration will provide 1,000 charging points in Mexico. GM's vehicle product manager said, we are working with our network of distributors to also bring these devices to points of sale throughout the country. This network is expected to be ready by August through September of 2025. Previously, we've seen Tesla partner with companies like BP. There, Tesla made a deal to sell BP $100 million worth of reliable supercharger equipment, which BP will then rebrand and install themselves. Likely, this could be the case here with GM. It is listed as a partnership, but GM may instead be trying to boost charging coverage where their customers need it most, while utilizing Tesla's equipment and expertise for charging. Either way, it's exciting to see because it means 1,000 more reliable chargers are coming to North America soon, and should be usable by any EV. Next up today, earlier this week we saw a leaked test version of Tesla's upcoming Model Y Juniper refresh. This was spotted outside the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, and marks the first time we are seeing Tesla testing this refresh. Technically, we don't know for sure what's changed on this car, but it is covered up in the exact same spots where the Model 3 Highland was covered when that was out on the road testing. We saw leaked photos of that car that showed us what it would look like, and then Tesla was spotted out in the wild with it a few different times. Now the Model Y is in the same boat, but we pretty much know exactly what this car is going to look like. There are some really great renders of what this car will look like, since it is based so much on the Model 3. But spotting one covered up in the wild really shows us that Tesla is getting this car ready. As for a timeline, Tesla and Elon have specifically said that it is not coming this year, but many expect to see it as soon as Tesla can release it in 2025. The most difficult part for them will likely be coordinating this out of four different factories simultaneously as not to hurt sales in any market. Sales are already likely hurting to a degree since customers can see the great improvements of the Model 3, so Tesla wants to get this release right considering it's their most popular car. In any case, the main features we expect are those coming from the Model 3. An upgraded interior, better ride, better cabin isolation, a rear screen, ventilated seats, and more. But one feature that Tesla introduced on the Cybertruck is a front bumper camera. This was expected on the Model 3 refresh, and Tesla even showed it in renders at one point, but it didn't end up releasing on it. This is a convenient camera for parking and general visibility, but many expect it to also be necessary to deliver true FSD, at least an extremely smooth version of it that doesn't creep forward as much. In any case, Tesla has been clear that there will be new versions of their FSD hardware coming. Right now they're on hardware 4, but Elon recently talked about hardware 5 coming in 18 months. That would likely include better cameras, and most notably an upgraded, better performing FSD computer. This is where many expect a front facing camera to become standard, and it now looks like this could be at least partially coinciding with the release of the new Model Y. 
If we take that leaked photo and increase the exposure a bit and zoom in, we can see a very blurry but obvious tab hanging down in the front. It actually seems like this is a cover specifically designed to cover over a front bumper camera. That seems extremely intentional and it's very interesting to see. We expected this camera on the Model 3 refresh and it seems Tesla was very close to releasing it on it, but now it might actually be coming to the new Model Y. A front bumper camera currently only ships on the Cybertruck, but rumors have also said for a couple months now that a new Model S and X refresh is on the way, adding ambient lighting inside and a front bumper camera. Tesla is putting all of the pieces in motion for this to come soon to their entire lineup of cars, and many would argue that it is very much overdue. You can experience this while using FSD, that visibility just isn't ideal from the front, with the car taking a long time to creep forward and make certain turns where it can't quite see. At the same time, this could also finally enable things like an overhead 360 view if Tesla ever decides to bring that. Overall, this refresh will be a pretty big deal. Even if it simply takes what the Model 3 has brought already, it will be a popular option for a car that has been largely unchanged in four years time. Now it looks like it will also be adding a front bumper camera, but we'll see what else this may bring. I'll be sure to keep you posted as we get more leaks of this car leading up to its launch. Real quick, if you're into general tech, AI, robotics, and Apple, I have a new podcast channel called All Future where my friend Matt and I discuss all the latest news there and what it means for the future. We put out videos throughout the week and you can check that out linked in the description below. Next up, let's talk about today's sponsor, Recurrent. Recurrent is a free platform designed by battery scientists to analyze your EV's range and battery. EV drivers can connect to their car for daily owner insights, and they currently have around 20,000 active vehicles for 50 plus makes and models in all 50 states. Here's a sample report for a 2023 Tesla Model Y, which details this car's expected range, real world range, range in three years, how much time is left on the warranty, and more. When it's time to sell or trade in, EV sellers can now use their recurrent info to sell their car for more by showing their range and battery are strong. Recurrent's network of dealerships pays a premium for these cars, and I had success using this early on when selling my 2018 Model 3. The buyer beat all online offers and came to my house to pick up the Model 3. With their service, the EV owner makes more money, and for large auto auctions, they've found that including recurrent battery insights increased the average sale price by $1,400 and helped cars sell faster. If you're looking to buy your first EV, shoppers can check the range, battery, and tax credit eligibility on tens of thousands of used EVs for free with recurrent reports. It's free for consumers, no data is ever shared without consent, and battery data is handled securely with end-to-end -end encryption. With recurrent, we can buy, drive, and sell electric cars positively. So check them out by clicking the link in the description below. Next up today, one big thing we see a lot from Tesla lately is their very flexible pricing, incentives, and interest rate strategy. Periodically, Tesla will offer deals, things like free supercharging and more, to drive sales, but one of the biggest deals comes in the form of interest rates. Right now, interest rates on car purchases have risen quite a bit. Even with a recent slight decrease, the Model Y currently sits in an interest rate of 6.29% when financed through Tesla. Two months ago, we saw them introduce a special 0.99% financing offer, saving customers thousands over the course of ownership. That deal was temporary, but drove a lot of sales for the Model Y at the time. Recently, we saw an APR deal for the Model 3 as well, but that one was fairly short-lived. Now, Tesla has introduced an exciting 0% interest rate specifically in the UK. This applies to both the Model Y and Model 3. They say, quote, now available for 0% interest rate. Go ahead, take the road trip in Model 3 or Model Y this summer. This is an incredible deal and one absolutely worth taking advantage of if you live in the UK and have been waiting to buy. That said, the UK is a specific market, and what will really be exciting is if Tesla offers this elsewhere. For many viewers on this channel, that means the US. To illustrate the huge difference in cost between a 6.29% APR and 0% APR, let's take a long-range all-wheel drive Model Y. If you pay cash for that car and don't qualify for a tax credit, it comes in at $47,990 new from Tesla. On top of that are registration fees, taxes, and a destination fee, but those will vary depending on where you live. In California, that would add about $5,542 to the final price, coming in around $53,500, but let's just say $51,000 total as a rough estimate for various states. At a 6.29% interest rate with a 72 month loan term and $4,000 down up front, you're looking at a monthly payment of about $735. Compare that to 0% and it would come in around $652. 
Over the course of your loan, 0% interest would wind up saving you about $8,935.64. In practice, this doesn't feel quite the same as Tesla dropping their price by $9,000, since it's spread out over six years. But consider if Tesla offered $9,000 off the Model 3 or Y tomorrow. That would be an incredible deal. That's the kind of savings that these 0% interest offers give you, so this is very exciting for UK buyers. Right now, Tesla isn't offering anything like this in the US, but it seems like we could see another one very soon. It could be a reason for many to buy the current Model Y rather than waiting, alongside things like new colors like Quicksilver and new wheel covers. Next up today, further regarding those cameras we talked about with the Model Y and Tesla's general FSD approach, there are a lot of updates this week. First off, for the second time now, a Model 3 test mule has been spotted with entirely new camera locations. These camera locations are not just new to the Model 3, but very obviously not placed in locations where the Model 3 would even support cameras without a major design overhaul. Here we can see a rear camera mounted just above the rear camera location, along with a camera installed into the rear passenger side window. This is a better look at that particular side camera, and it clearly shows a camera located inside this very large housing. It's very interestingly inset and seems quite intentional. For the side fender cameras, instead of the normal ones, there are these altered versions that stick out about one to two inches. This would add quite a bit of visibility over the current location, and then we can clearly see a mounted front bumper camera. Again, this location is sitting slightly above and in front of where a front bumper camera would normally be if it shipped on a Model 3. These were spotted in California, but a different Model 3 with Texas plates was spotted with these same cameras in place a few months ago. This is very interesting to see because these very clearly point to one thing, the RoboTaxi. The RoboTaxi's unveil is scheduled for August 8th, and there have been a variety of renders as to what this car might look like. Tesla's own render is shown here, and it appeared in Elon Musk's biography. Since it was shown in that book, most expect that it will look quite different than this, but even Tesla's simple wood mock-up from their design studio, which says NV93 vehicle package on the wall, seems like it might actually have the shape of that camera currently testing on the Model 3's door. In fact, if we do a very basic Photoshop job with this camera location, it seems to fit into that RoboTaxi mock-up pretty perfectly. Of course, this all could change, but that is a pretty interesting coincidence. Considering we're less than a month away from Tesla showing us what this dedicated RoboTaxi would look like, Tesla testing its camera locations in the wild makes perfect sense. In any case, the latest version of FSD, version 12.4, which has been talked about for quite some time, is finally starting to push to customers. This is fully version 12.4.3 and should bring a number of improvements. Some have reported issues with this version already, however there's always another version on the way, and Elon Musk has said that 12.5.x will finally combine the city and highway software stacks. One thing that many have noticed and have been quite confused by is how often Elon talks about FSD's next version being mind-blowing, but then customers using it and finding different results. It's still mind-blowing in certain ways, but he seems to talk about how rarely he needs interventions, when customers still need to take over quite often. As such, a new report this week from Business Insider claims that Tesla has been specifically optimizing FSD for both Elon Musk and FSD content creators. In the article, they say, quote, BI spoke with over a dozen current and former Tesla employees, all but one who spoke on condition of anonymity, who said images and video clips from Musk's Teslas received meticulous scrutiny, while data from high-profile drivers like YouTubers received VIP treatment in identifying and addressing issues with the full self-driving software. The result is that Tesla's autopilot and FSD software may better navigate routes taken by Musk and other high-profile drivers, making their rides smoother and more straightforward. Reportedly, employees were specifically tasked to work on routes around Tesla, SpaceX, Twitter, and other locations frequented by Elon Musk. One employee added, quote, It seemed like we were purposely making his car better to make autopilot look different than it was. It felt dishonest. On the surface, this definitely isn't a great look, but it does reflect a few different things. First, Elon is the CEO, so when he notices a particular problem, it is going to be a priority for that to be fixed. That gets fixed by going through the situations he actually encountered. Second, FSD content creators are putting videos out there, directly documenting their experience, so it's very easy and clear for Tesla themselves to see this and know exactly what to fix. This is how the process would naturally go, but the downside is that you end up with a system somewhat optimized for these, quote, VIP FSD testers. This is addressed in the article, quote, some employees claimed that this is due to those content creators pushing the system to their limits, and therefore, it makes sense to train its neural nets to handle those situations, but it would also result in them having a better experience than the average Tesla FSD beta driver. So this comes with that downside. 
When you go online and see videos of FSD in action, or see Elon Musk livestream his experience, you are likely seeing an optimized version of FSD that may not reflect your experience once you pay $8,000 or subscribe for $99 a month to try the system for yourself. I personally see this as an issue, but also something that comes with the territory and is hard to rectify. What are your thoughts though? Does this seem like the byproduct of a normal feedback loop? Or like Tesla is maliciously trying to make FSD look better than it is? Leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. Over at GM, they broke Q2 and first half EV sales records this past quarter, thanks to models like the Equinox and Blazer entering the market. For Q2, they delivered 21,930 EVs, which is up 31% from Q1. That puts their sales at 38,355 for the first half of the year. 6,634 of those were the Chevy Blazer EV, 1,013 were the Equinox, and 2,196 were the Silverado EV. Output also increased of their existing EVs, including the Lyric and Hummer EV. The Lyric ended up with 7,294 units sold, and the Hummer ended up with 2,929. Overall, while these numbers still pale in comparison to Tesla's, it's great to see progress here. Things have been much slower than anticipated with GM's EV lineup, but they are starting to make progress on their Ultium line of EVs. At the same time, GM is facing a $145.8 million penalty and the forfeit of credits worth hundreds of millions, quote, after a US government investigation found excess emissions from approximately 5.9 million GM vehicles. These include 4.6 million 2012 to 2018 full-size pickups and SUVs, along with 1.3 million 2012 to 2018 mid-size SUVs. For the upcoming all-electric 2025 Cadillac Escalade IQ, pricing has just been unveiled. This will start at $129,990, with the top trim coming in at $150,490. This pricing is very high, but this is an extremely luxurious car with up to 460 miles of estimated range. This is a car for a very specific customer, but it does bring a ton of range and comfort. It likely will be the longest range SUV ever shipped when it comes, but that is very much in part due to its gigantic battery pack. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you wanna see my full review of the Tesla Model Y after two years of ownership, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Also, a reminder to check out all future if you're interested in tech beyond Tesla. That's linked below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.